welcome to our Russian table. Today I will show you some of the most um, popular and favorite dishes among Russians in Russian Federation and some of the European countries around it as well. I will be sipping on some kvass, a cup of kvass, also known to Europe or States or the rest of the world as root beer. It does um, consist of rye bread and it does contain a little bit of alcohol in it, which is 1.2%. So let's hope I won't get too light at it. Mm. Mm. Also, I will show you and obviously taste some of the hot soups, um, particularly in this case, borscht. Also, plov or pilaf, known to the rest of the world. Also, I'll taste some of the most favorite salads, such as undressed herring and olivia salad. Also, I have some sauerkraut in here or sour cabbage. And we'll taste and take a look at some of the sweets, some of the most favorite sweets, which is tula gingerbread and zephyr. So, stay tuned and uh, let's start. The first dish that we're going to try is called borscht and uh, this is a soup of Ukrainian origins and it's very popular in Russia as well as um, Eastern and Central Europe. It's made with beet root um, and that's what's giving it its deep reddish purple color. It is usually served with sour cream. Mm. <laughs> it is one of my favorite soups. And um, the traditional recipe includes carrots, some tomatoes, beets, potatoes, cabbage, and some bouillon. Mm. It does have an incredible rich reddish and purplish color that gives it that um, different look to it. Um, the smell is also very very rich um, many people sometimes add garlic into it, into this dish as well. That adds an extra kick to it and makes it extra Russian, I would say. <laughs> no. Okay. So here, uh, here we have a dish that is very popular all over the world. It has been found in the 10th century in Central Asia. However, um, the consistency and the ingredients truly depend on the location and the local um, cuisine, local preferences. I did make this dish myself. Well, I did make all of the dishes here. However, this one did not turn out. So we have a piece of pork here, a piece of carrot, um, I did add some garlic to it as well, so it really has a lot of aroma, and of course I have added all the proper spices for this dish. And now let's uh, try it. Mm -hmm. I really, really like the spices for plov. It always makes it taste just so specific. Mm. And of course, many, many nations have adopted this dish and now they make it their own. Mm. It is very popular uh, to be made with fish with pork, 
chicken, beef, veal, basically anything you can imagine. And um, different nations obviously add different flavorings to them. So, now let's uh, move on to the cold salads. Okay. Alright, so this dish is called sauerkraut or sour cabbage or kvashenaya kapusta that is in Russian and um, in Russia we do add Jupiter berry to it carrots as well as the cabbage itself mm. I apologize I dropped a piece <laughs> Now, this dish is um, basically started off from um, also sour cabbage that has been created in kimchi, as kimchi in China. And um, usually um, this is created by the process of pickling the cabbage. And um, it's very high in vitamin C, B, and K. Also, it's uh, very good for immune system. It has lots of calcium and magnesium in it. So, um, it's almost like a super antioxidant food for your body. So that's the sour crab or sour cabbage or gold kwashina kapusta. Now, how about we try one of my personal favorites? <laughs> this one is called Olivia, and I'm so excited to eat it. <laughs> Olivia consists in this case out of bologna, um, peas, carrots, eggs, pickles, and uh, potatoes, I believe, and a old um, filled up with mayo, mayonnaise. Now let's try it. Just a little piece, so I don't eat too much of it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one of my most favorite dishes ever. It's not very healthy for you, however, as you can tell. <laughs> but it is the most favorite dish um, to have on the table during holidays such as Christmas or New Year's. A lot of people truly enjoy this. Olivia traditionally um, is not actually a Russian dish because original version I'm gonna eat just a little bit more, I'm sorry <laughs> the original version of this recipe was invented by a Belgian chef whose name is Lucien Olivier and um, it has been created in 1860 but in early 20th century, it has been stolen <laughs> by Ivan Ivanov, a Russian chef, who added different ingredients and made it into this beautiful dish. That's, again, one of the most popular and most traditional dishes on the Russian table. Okay. And I believe he called it actually Stalichny. Um, but within among people, it's just gold. Olivia, let me have a sip of glass. Okay, so I have to be honest. This salad has got to be my most favorite one. Uh, this one is called dressed hearing, or silt or the actual. Um, translation of it is 
hearing and her fur coat and I assume it's because of the fluffy tapping that you get now this one consists of a layer of salted hearing fish followed by some onions, carrots, potatoes, beets and mayo even though it is a little bit weird and quite different it is definitely one of the most favorite dishes most favorite salads if you want to call it a salad out there mm -mm. and I really think I can eat it day and night non-stop just because how good it is mm -mm -mm. and again even though it has fish in it And it might turn off a lot of people, but it's amazing tasting. Mm -hmm. Now, let me have a little break and I'll show you some of the sweets. Alright, so now on to the sweets. Of course, um, there are a whole lot of different sweets in Russia and Russian Federation. I will show you some of the uh, most popular ones as well as um, local um, candy, so to say, sweet. Um, of course, we have wonderful cakes and many, many more varieties of um, um, sweets, <laughs> so to say. I'll just show you the most um, favorite and most basic ones. First one is zephyr, and second one um, of the two is or Tula gingerbread. Now, Zephyr is very similar to um, marshmallow. It has a lot of sugar and egg whites in it as well. It does have less browns, I would say, as you can see, it crumbles. So it's quite a different texture from marshmallow, but it's considered to be a similar um, item. Now let's let's just bite it off and see. And it's called again zephyr. So you can actually hear a little bit of a crunch from this. I don't know, it's quite soft. It still has quite a crunch. It is very, very sweet, mm -hmm. very sugary, kind of powdery at, at times. Mm -hmm. Very kind of like marshmallow, but more sugar. <laughs> that is one of my favorites. And this one's just vanilla. Which is um, Tula gingerbread. It's actually made in a town that's called Tula. And back in Russia, I'm actually not too far from this city, so we drive by many times. Uh, the first Tula gingerbread was created in 1685. Usually it's filled with jam or honey. Let's see. We're just going to crack it open. So that we can take a look at it from the inside. So again, you can see some of the jam right in the middle of it. And on top, I forgot to show you. It actually says Tulski which means tula. So you can see jam, right? Has some glazing on top as well. Let's have a bite. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I, mean, 
I didn't have these for a while. I quite missed them a lot. <laughs> Very nice gem. It goes right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Very crumbly. Yet the dough is still quite moist. You can see a little pattern on the bottom. Again, glazing on the top. I think it's decorated perfectly and beautifully. So, good for them. <laughs> okay, that would be the end to today's session. And I hope that you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.